so this is lecture 44 okay so we are talking about uh, coding and i gave you a brief idea about uh, minimum distance i went through real fast so i'm going to uh, do a brief review of this generator matrix parity check matrix and all of that and then proceed with minimum distance okay so basically if, when you're thinking of an nk linear block code Okay, so I didn't use this maybe block word before. It's called linear block code because it happens in blocks of n bits. Okay, so it's just, it's everything is a block code in practice. Okay, but still the traditional naming is block code. Okay, so an nk linear code. Okay, so you the various ways of describing it. The most elegant way of describing it is through the generator matrix, which is systematic. Okay, so i k and then a p, which is a k by n minus k matrix. Okay, corresponding to this, there is a description in the dual space which is p transpose i n minus k okay remember this is a k by n matrix each row belongs to the code it's a code word and the row space is the entire code okay so this is a parity check matrix which is n minus k by n okay so you can see the way the dimensions worked out i wrote p transpose here p transpose is n minus k by k and then i n minus k is n minus k by n minus k so it works out like that okay so what how do you describe it uh, the code can be described in two ways. Okay, so the code itself, using the generator matrix, its set of all C equals M times G, where M is a k bit vector. Okay, so this is one way of describing the code. Okay, the equivalent way of describing it in terms of the parity check matrix is set of all C in 0, 1, n such that what? H times C transpose is 0 n minus K transpose. Okay, so this is both of them are the exact same ways of specifying the code. Okay, one is in the language of basis and generator matrix, the other is in the language of the dual space and the parity check matrix. Okay, so both of these are exactly equivalent. Okay, so one can imagine immediately if you look at this definition, the generator matrix can be used for encoding. Okay, so you see that very easily. Generator matrix can be used for encoding. What do you think the parity check matrix can be used for immediately? And for a process called error detection. Okay, suppose you have a n bit vector and you want to find out if it's a code word or not. Okay, yeah. So you multiply by h times c transpose and see if it evaluates to zero. Okay, it's difficult to do with generator matrix because you have to generate all the code words and test one after the other. Well, not really, right? How will you do it with the generator matrix? Uh, well, suppose you don't know the parity check matrix trick. You have to look at the first k bits, right? You know the first k bits have to be equal to the message and you can do it. It's, it's the same thing. You're doing the exact same thing, but it's good to think of it in terms of the parity check matrix. Okay, so this is the definition. Okay, a related third quantity, which is very important, is the minimum distance. Okay, so D is the minimum distance. So typically people talk of an NKD code. So D is so important that it can be put in the parameter itself. So people talk of an NKD code. So D is the minimum distance and that definition is very, very important. Okay. It's basically the smallest distance, Hamming distance between any two valid code words in your code. Okay. So since it's a linear code, you can simplify it and evaluate it in a different way. You look at the list of all possible codes, code words, look at all possible non-zero code words and find the minimum weight of a non-zero code word. Okay, so remember there can be more than one code word with minimum weight, but that doesn't matter to you. The minimum weight is the definition for the minimum distance. Both of them are equivalent ways of doing the minimum distance. Okay, so that's one thing. See, the other way to think about coding, okay, which is very important from a decoding point of view, is what coding does to the constellation. Okay, so typically you always keep the BPSK in mind as your constellation. Okay, right, you always think of BPSK as the constellation and code as something that is sitting outside of the constellation. But in reality, that is not true. Why is that not true? Why can I not think of just in a coded system? Why can I not think of just BPSK as the constellation for the decoder? Because each symbol is not independent of the other. So I cannot just use BPSK and decode unless I am doing hard decision decoding. If I am doing hard decision decoding, I can think of BPSK, make suboptimal decisions and then do hard decision decoding that is one way of doing it but if i want to do soft decision decoding or alt or optimal decoding i have to think of a larger constellation in 
n dimension okay so a code an nk code induces a larger n dimensional constellation okay so you have to take the n bits together map them into the symbols okay so you will get how many possible symbols if you do bpsk symbol by symbol okay out of these n in n dimensions you will have 2 power k points okay so that is what is actually happening okay if you were doing independent bpsk in n dimensions you would still have 2 power n and it's in fact no need to do all that because you can happily do decoding symbol by symbol now we are not doing that you are only picking 2 power k of the 2 power n possibilities in this large dimension signal space okay what 2 power k you are picking is given by the generator matrix and the parity check matrix okay to do optimal decoding you have to think of this big signal space okay so now when i when i want to do soft decision decoding what should i do i should so it is easy to see once i have a big constellation soft decision decoding out optimal ml decoding is very easy to define what do you do yeah nearest neighbor given a received vector evaluate distance from all of these 2 power k signal points and then pick that point which was closest to you forget about complexity for a while we'll say okay fine whatever k we'll do that so it, implementing the soft decoder is this at least in words is very easy okay so that's what i'm going to write down next okay so that's what we'll see next but before that i want to give some examples for minimum distance before we proceed okay so that's the last thing we saw i quickly went through the minimum distance I want to go through, do the minimum distance examples first and then we'll see the soft decision decoding and you'll see it's very easy to just write down. It's not very difficult. Okay. So we'll see some examples for minimum distance. Okay. Minimum distance is also called demon. Okay. It's always said demon, demon, demon. So it's just shorter to write. Okay. So, so what I'm going to do is give you a generator matrix and ask you to give me the minimum distance of the code. Okay. So this is a generator matrix. Okay, I'm going to give you a generator matrix and ask you for the three parameters n, k, and d. Okay, so it seems reasonable, right? So what is n? N is what? Six, right? So what's k? Three. That's the easiest to figure out. Next is minimum distance. Okay, and there are two ways of doing it. I said there's one way. There's actually two ways. First way is to list out all the code words, enumerate all the code words. How many code words will you have here? 8 and it's not too difficult to list out the 8 code words here. List out all the 8 code words and pick that code word with minimum weight. So let's do that. So the code itself is what? First code word is 000. zero, zero. And then you have okay. So I'm quickly listing out. Let me know if I'm making a mistake. Okay, those are my eight code words. I just did all possible linear combinations and came up with the eight code words. So now from here, minimum distance is very, very easy to evaluate. Okay, so we look at the non-zero code words. Minimum weight is three, but how many minimum weight code words are there? Number of minimum weight code words equals four. Okay. In fact, you can completely list out all the weights. Okay, there's one code word of weight zero, as it will always happen, and then there are four code words of weight three and three code words of weight four. Okay, so that's how the code looks. Okay, the other way of figuring out minimum distance is to look at the parity check matrix and try to guess or quickly find which is the smallest weight code word which will give me. Uh, zero when I multiply. Okay, so the parity check matrix is going to be okay. That's the parity check matrix. Okay, and for doing this, going from the parity check matrix, you have to be very careful. Okay, so, so several of your intuitions will fail because this minimum distance is not an intuitive quantity like the rank. Okay, rank is a completely different quantity of a matrix. This is a very complicated quantity, cannot very easily compute it. The best way of doing it is to Start from the all zero code word, well not the all zero code word, code words of weight 1, code words of weight 2, code words of weight 3 like that. Keep eliminating everything 
till you get uh, to a successful point okay some bounds you can quickly get but beyond that it's very dangerous okay so don't do anything beyond that is the moral of the story okay so here if you look at code words of weight 1 okay there cannot be any code words of weight 1 okay right what's the only way in which you can have a code word of weight 1 there should be an all zero column in the parity check matrix if you if unless you have an all zero column in the parity check matrix you can never have a code word of weight 1 okay how will you have a code word of weight 2 two? two columns should be identical okay so those are two things to look for okay so just look at the matrix and see if there's an all zero column if there's an all zero column then immediately you can have a code word of weight 1 do you see that no okay suppose this first column is zero okay what is a code word if you take this code word if you take this vector this will be a code word okay remember when you have a matrix and you multiply with a vector on the right you are doing a linear combination of the columns of the matrix okay so that's very important okay when you have a matrix you multiplying with a vector on the left what are you doing linear combination of the rows okay so these is these are the things to keep in mind so when i'm multiplying on the right with a binary vector what am i doing i'm only doing an xor of the columns okay so there's no scaling involved okay there's no in the linear combination i'm only doing addition okay so it's using those things it's very easy to see okay so let's go back to the old matrix 101 okay so now the question is when will i have a code word of weight 2 okay if i have to have a code word of weight 2 then two columns must be identical right only then those two columns will be linearly dependent and i can add them to give you zero okay so this is binary okay so this is not non binary if you used to non binary spaces this will seem a little bit confusing but this is binary so that's the only way in, in which it can work okay the next is 3 3 is a little bit more complicated okay so you have to look at it and check okay but here you can easily come up with code words of weight 3 for instance if you put a 1 here then i put a 1 1 here it has to be a code word how did i come up with that okay so i put a 1 here and then looking at the identity matrix i selected those columns which will cancel out all the ones that i got here okay so that's a smart way of doing it so you see from here also that minimum distance is 3 okay <coughs> but whichever way you cut it for a large general code finding minimum distance in fact has been proven to be what's called an np hard problem okay which means there are no known algorithms and unlikely to be very easy algorithms to be solved okay so that's the that's the story here okay so this much you should be comfortable doing given a generated matrix or a parity check matrix you should be able to list out all the code words figure out nk and d or find the generated find the parity check matrix and find d from them okay so that's a simple enough uh, thing to do okay so so i think that's uh, that's about minimum distance any question on how i did this okay all right so okay so coming back to the general picture okay so suppose i'm looking at soft ml decoding soft maximum likelihood decoding okay so like i said you have a k bit message which goes through an encoder and you get a n bit code word and then you do symbol by symbol bpsk to get symbol vectors okay so this again n uh n uh, okay so let me just say uh, n symbols okay so so you have to be careful when you think of your decoding you cannot do symbol by symbol if you want to do soft ml right so you have to look at the entire uh symbol as a whole and then decode it okay so you have noise adding to this and you get r okay so this is this belongs to what's called rn or n real numbers okay so then you have to build a decoder soft ml decoder and produce say let me say c hat or s hat or or m hat all of these are the are equivalent right so any one you produce you have done decoding okay so the actual formula is really really simple okay so you know your actual constellation is n dimensional okay and you know the list of all symbol vectors that you have okay 
so so writing it down is very very easy okay so my code is c suppose my code i denote as c okay a code words the c will belong to capital c right so when i go from code word to symbol what am i doing every zero goes to plus 1 and every 1 goes to minus 1 okay so corresponding to the code i'll also have a, a set of code symbols okay like just like i have 2 power k code words each code word when converted through bpsk will give me a symbol vector so i have a set of 2 power k symbol set of code symbols and these are my actual constellation points in n dimension okay so this set i will maybe call capital s okay so there is a very succinct short way of describing s in terms of c which is also very misleading because it's the way i write it down it will be a integer operation and not a modulo 2 operation i can write s as 1 minus 2 times c okay right so do you see that the reason is this s small s will be 1 minus 2 times small c okay so if c is 0 ca is 0 what is si it's 1 if ca is 1 si is minus 1 so it's a very simple way just a notation for denoting bpsk modulation it doesn't really matter how i do it it's just a way of writing it down. okay so keep this in mind so once i know all this writing down c hat is very very easy okay c hat is argument of minimization over c in c of what distance between r and 1 minus 2c square or no square or whatever okay so that's the that's the definition okay so it's a simple definition i've written down how i do my minimum distance decoding i look at each and every symbol vector and evaluate its distance from my received vector r and then pick that symbol vector or that code word which gave me the smallest possible distance okay so this is easy to write down but one can easily see it's very difficult to evaluate in practice okay so if you have k being 500 or something you have 2 power 500 symbol vectors you can't do this in practice very easily okay so there are codes for which this is easier but in general it cannot be done very easily okay so if you manage to do it how will how well will you do What, can you get a estimate of your probability of error is the next question okay so if you manage to do soft ml decoding how can you estimate your probability of error okay so once again we'll use the same union bound technique of pairwise error probability okay suppose i transmit a particular code word i am in a certain point in my n dimensional constellation there i have to figure out my closest nearest neighbors and find the distance between my nearest neighbor and myself and then q of d by 2 sigma is an estimate multiplied by the number of nearest neighbors is a reasonable estimate of my probability of error okay so it's a pairwise error probability type computation of course it's not accurate accurate estimations are very difficult so i do a accurate approximate estimation so now what what do you think will control that distance the demon of the code okay so the demon of the code will play a very crucial role in telling you what the distance will be okay so can you compute that distance in terms of demon okay suppose i give you an nkd code okay what is the what is the distance between nearest neighbors and nd signal constellation what's the answer no hmm root d okay then by all kinds of computations okay so let's see suppose i have a vector u which is u1 u2 un this is a binary vector and a vector v which is v1 v2 vn okay suppose this is my 
two vectors. Okay. So what's the distance between one minus two u and one minus two v? Okay. Wherever these two binary vectors agree, what will happen? There will be no distance. Wherever they disagree, there will be a distance of two. Okay. Well, two squared, right? So you have to add it up. Am I right? You will get two squared. And then how many such distances will there be? As many as the Hamming distance between u and v. So I can easily write this as dh of u comma v times what? 4. So 4 is the demon of my constellation, demon square of my constellation. Is that fine? No, it won't be dh square. Number of places in which u and v differ matters. Okay, so it says dh square is not going to enter the picture. Okay, so for each position in which they differ, there will be a contribution of 4 to this sum, right? Wherever they differ. If they are the same, then they will cancel out. There is no problem. Wherever u and v differ, there will be a contribution of 4, right? 1 and minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, you will get 2, 2 square is 4. Okay, so this is the magic formula for distance. So now you know this, what is the answer to my question? What is the distance between closest neighbors? This question is going to be 2 times root d. Okay, that is going to be the distance. Okay, so that is all. This factor 2 is just comes because of my minus 1 plus 1. If that is a minus a plus a, you will have a 4a squared and it will be a 2a there. Okay, so that is all. Okay, so 2 times root d. Okay, so the next thing you need for estimating probability of error is a rough estimate of how many nearest neighbors you have and that is a difficult thing to estimate. Okay, so, like, so mm, for a general code, it is very difficult. D itself is difficult. On top of that, finding the number of minimum weight code words can be more difficult. Okay? So you take that as a constant k. Okay? So, so you say k is the number of minimum weight code words. Okay? So I said number of minimum weight non-zero code words. Okay? So let me be very clear. Okay? So, so what it means is from the all zero code word, I have k nearest neighbors. Now, I am going to say since I have linearity from any other code word also, I will have exactly k nearest neighbors. Okay, so, because of the linearity, I can simply add all these things to that and you will get the same thing. Okay. So, you will have k nearest neighbors for any particular transmitted code. Okay, so, a good bound for the probability of error, a okay, good estimate of the probability of error is k times q of 2 root d by sigma. Okay, so this is remember for BPSK plus 1 minus 1. Okay, so if you had something else, then other formulas will occur. Is that okay? No, there should be a 2 sigma, right? 2 sigma. So it becomes k times q of root d times root t by sigma. Okay. Okay, so I am happy with this formula, but I am not too happy. Why? I am sorry? Well, I do not know D, you know, but I am saying from a comparison point of view, I need to write P E as a function of E B U by N0. Okay, so I have to do that manipulation. Okay, so change it. How will you substitute? Okay, so E B by N0 is what? E B by N0 is 1 by 2 R. R is what? K by N. So this is my formula. So, 1 by sigma have to be substituted. So, PE becomes approximately capital K Q. Uh, so, 1 by sigma can be written as root 2 K by N E B over N naught. Am I right? Okay. So, there is going to be a root D added to it. So, you get 2 K D by N E B over N naught. Okay, so this is for the coded system, right? If you have an NK code, NKD code with capital K minimum weight vector. So usually I think it's it's good to write K sub D because D is the minimum weight. Okay, so I'll write K sub D in my notation. Okay, so you don't know capital K sub D, but you don't have to be too worried about it because when E B over N0 becomes large, the term that will dominate will be 
the q q goes exponentially down and this is a constant it doesn't vary with sigma clearly okay so at least that much we know right so you can happily uh, ignore that okay so wh what is it for an uncoded system if you have an uncoded system this is q of what root of 2 eb by n naught okay right so what will happen if i plot these two things with p in log scale and eb over n naught and db scale roughly for large eb over n naught the difference will be what so coding gain nominal it's called nominal coding gain because there are so many factors that are ignored is what kd by n in db so you have to do a 10 times log 10 okay so you do 10 times log base 10 of kd by n db okay so this is a good formula and it works for several cases for instance for the repetition code what does it work out k is 1 d is n it works out to 0 okay so for at least for the repetition code it's an accurate estimate of <laughs> coding gain okay so it's a reasonably good estimate high eb or n0 it's a good estimate but it turns out it's not a very good estimate at very low eb or n0 okay so and today people work at very low eb or n0 okay the codes that are today can give you all kinds of coding gains very close to capacity and you work at very very low eb or n0 okay so because of that this bound has slightly lesser importance but but eventually but this is very useful at least for the first course to understand what coding gain is all about this is a very good bound okay so you see it works there are two contradictory factors here okay so if you decrease k you can hope to increase d okay but it actually depends on the product okay so there's a trade-off so how much can you decrease and how much can you increase will it increase fast enough to give you a reasonable coding gain is the kind of game you have to play okay so the next thing I'm going to do is give you an example for the 7-4 Hamming code and let's try to evaluate its nominal coding gain. Okay. Okay. So I gave you a parity check matrix. Okay. So I'm not going to be able to probably produce the exact same parity check matrix. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're saying log ten should not be there. But then for the repetition code, it works out as something else. No? Why are you saying it should not be? See, EB over N0 is not in DB. It's an actual number. Yes, uh -huh. Well, Q is some function. I mean, I'm not quite sure if you're right about that. I think you can, you can definitely say 10 times log 10 KD by, KD by N0. It's a scaling factor. I think this is OK. OK, I can check once again, but I'm quite sure this is OK. OK, so it has to show up. See, EB over N0, I have not written in DB. So look at the definition here. It's n by 2k sigma square. If I wrote that in DB and then I wrote an exponential inside, then you are right. Okay, I think this is okay. Think about it. Anyway, it will work out for you. Okay, so, so let me see if I can reproduce the exact same. One, one. So, so what is the parity check matrix I had for the Hamming code? I don't know. Seems to be too many discussions going on. I think it is 10 log 10 KB, KD by N. Okay, so it's, I'm reasonably confident about that. Then you think about it. So, what's the next column I had? If I forget what the, so it's a 3 by 7 matrix, right? I forget what I had. Uh, okay, so what did I have for the first column? Parity check matrix for the 7 4 Hamming code. 110. One, zero. Next one is 101. 111 one, 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 and 011. One, one, huh? 
okay so the actual order doesn't matter okay so it ma doesn't make any difference but anyway i just wanted to produce the same thing once again okay so for this code what's the minimum distance okay, it turns out it's 3 okay so you can show this once again okay so it is 3 and uh, it can be proven uh, quite easily using the same technique as before you can show it's 3 okay so there are no there is no all zero column so it cannot be one no two columns are identical it cannot be two and there are three columns which add to zero okay so you can quickly produce that one zero 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 one one zero okay that adds to zero so that's a way three uh, code word okay so this is a code word so this is uh, way three so how many such code words will there be any rough estimate somebody who can quickly count Okay, so it turns out the answer is 7. Okay, so you can think about it, maybe you can justify it quickly, but the answer is 7. Okay, so that's the that's how it works. And these are these are things that you can quickly compute. If you want, you can list out all the 16 code words, not too difficult. See, there'll be an all zero code word, there'll be an all one code word, there'll be seven code words of weight three and seven code words of weight four. Okay, so that's how it'll work. Okay, so this is KD. Okay, so now if you do a computation, what is the approximate nominal coding gain? Okay, KD doesn't matter for the nominal coding gain. I just gave you that information. This 10 times log 10, 4 into 3 by 7, 12 by 7, that will work out as what? Roughly, let me see how quick, how good people have a dB computation. What's 12 by 7 in dB? It's not quite 3 dB, right? 2.5 maybe. Okay, so roughly. Okay. 2.5 dB. Okay. So there are several ways of doing it. So roughly it will be 2.5. It's not quite 3, but it cannot be too far away from 3 because you know 2 times 7 is 14 and 12 is fairly close there. Okay, so it will be maybe 2.5 dB. Just giving you a rough number. So you can expect that much coding gain from the Hamming code. And remember, this is. Okay, I think you should be excited about this. Okay, so it's just a 7-4 code. In fact, you can even Im imagine doing a soft ML decoder with this. And you're getting 2.5 dB extra for, for in your uh, system. Okay, so no other technique that you ever do will ever give you anything like this. Any, you can come up with any kind of equalization technique. You'll only pay a penalty. Okay, so you'll never get any gains. Coding is the only thing which gives you this improvement in your, uh, in your trade-off between uh, probability of error and SNR. In all equalization, you are trying to limit the damage. Okay, so in every other technique, signal processing technique, you are the receiver. You pretty much limit your damage. Okay, coding is the only technique which gives you an advantage. Okay, so that's another useful way of thinking about. It. Okay, so but to get this 2.5 dB, what should you do? The price you pay is you have to compute 16 different distances, or you can actually you can look at the distance formula very closely. It will work out to just 16 different dot products. Okay. But you have to do 16 different dot products. Maybe you can even simplify that computation. So it's not a very difficult thing to do. But maybe your hardware is not capable of producing, say, 8 bits or 7 bits or 6 bits of data for each R. Maybe you can only produce 1 bit. So you are forced to quantize or make a hard decision on each symbol at the receiver. If you are doing that, then you are forced to do what's called hard decision decoding. So that's what we'll see next, which is suboptimal already. But we want to see that and study that because that's a nice alternative. Okay, so maybe you don't want to spend all that time doing soft decoding. You want to quickly decode and figure out what the what the code word could have been. So then you take just one bit of information for each RI. Okay, so how does that system look? This is how it looks. Okay, so hard ML decoder. This is what we'll see next. Okay. So the picture is same as before. You have M and then you do an encoder. You get C. Okay. And then you do uh, what BPSK. You get S and then you add noise to it. You get R but you do what? This R is not accessible to you. You do a symbol by symbol slicing which is immediately suboptimal, but you do it just to take that. And then you get a B, which is N bits again. And you want to decode this, well, hard ML decode this or whatever. 
and produce c hat or well s hat is quite irrelevant here so i'll do only m hat okay okay is that clear so this model since you are anyway finally doing hard decoding you can simplify this model further you don't have to go from bits to symbol and then add noise to the symbol and then take symbol by symbol decisions again you can go directly put a model from here to here what will that model be okay so i can bypass all these things and develop a model for this hard decision system which jumps directly from c to b if i transmit a ci bi will be equal to ci with what probability with probability what some p which is equal to what you can easily compute this q 1 by well 1 minus q 1 by sigma do you see that that's the probability of correct decision in a symbol by symbol slicer and bi is not equal to ci with probability p well let me be careful yes i want to write p for the probability of error i'm sorry so i'll write 1 minus so p equals q 1 by sigma right you know this is what will happen if you do symbol by symbol decisions if you send a plus 1 you will go wrong and decode it as a minus 1 in a symbol by symbol decision with probability q of 1 by sigma and this is what will happen from bi to ci okay so an equivalent model is to have an error vector here which is e1 e2 en okay and ei is zero with probability what 1 minus p and 1 with probability p and it is iid okay so instead of so you build a smaller simpler probabilistic model in which you don't go to the continuous time domain and then take it q and come back you just write a simple model where you go from c to b directly okay so e is a uh, well i don't know what you call it it's maybe a binomial process or something like that okay so n instances of it and you get a vector e all right so this is this kind of a model is what's called a binary symmetric channel okay so you have m do an encoding well the coding is okay but and then you do what you get, go through what's called a binary symmetric channel with transition probability p and you produce b okay and then you decode this to produce c hat or m hat okay so what we had previously is a bpsk over awgn model okay in the hard decision case on bpsk over awgn you can simplify it to a binary symmetric channel model okay so my hard ml decoder while being suboptimal in the bpsk over awgn model it is the optimal decoder for the bsc model right once you know it's a bsc there's nothing better you can do you don't have access to the r anymore okay so the best thing you can do is this so it's optimal only in this model okay so a good example of a binary symmetric channel in real life is what okay you need speeds so high that you can't get more than one bit in your a to d at the front end so what 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 kind of systems have speeds that are so high optical links backhaul optical links etc okay so they are going to 40 gig and all that so it's difficult to get more than one bit in practice at those rates so you have to work with just one bit not only that when you are sending at 40 gig you have to do your decoding at a reasonable speed they do demultiplexing and actual decoders work at a much lower rate but still you have to work at several megabits per second and you can't hope to do correlations and soft decision decoding at that speed so you have to only do hard decision decoding so because of those reasons this is a pretty good model for uh, fast communications okay so where you just make symbol by symbol decisions okay so even in such a model so remember what this model is okay so i have a code word c which is k bits this is n bits but my c belongs to a code c okay so there are two power k possibilities right my error vector actually all two power n possibilities are there okay so because of that clearly b also will have will be all two power n possibilities okay so those is those are things to keep in mind but b is still n bits e is still n bits okay all right 
So, what you are transmitting at this point is an n bit vector. Okay. What is the probability mass function for this n bit vector? Yeah, at the transmitting end. Yeah, it is uniform over the only the 2 power k. For the remaining, it is 0. That is the probability mass function. What is the probability mass function for the error vector? For the error vector, forget about convolving. It's all discrete. Don't keep convolving. Okay. So what is E? It's it's different. Okay. So which will be the highest probable error vector? Assuming p is less than half. Okay. So usually you assume p is less than half. Means your your system is working to some degree. Okay. It's not it's not getting well. P greater than half doesn't make any sense. Okay. So why does p greater than half doesn't make any sense? You just flip. You get a lesser probability probability less than half. So p greater than half makes no sense. You always assume p less than half. So once you have p less than half. The most probable error vector is what? The all zero vector. What is the next more probable vector? Vectors of weight 1. Okay. So in fact, probability of E is equal to what? P to the power Hamming weight of E times 1 minus P to the power N minus Hamming weight of E. So you can clearly write down the PMF of the error vector. Okay, so it's a probability and it's generated by a probabilistic process, and the PMF for each probability for each e can be written down very precisely, right? And from this formula, it's very easy to show that if you increase weight, the probability will go down for the error vector. Okay, so it's a clear ordering for these probabilities. While for c, there is no real ordering, right? So among the two power k, it is uniform. Okay, beyond the two power k, you know, okay, non-code words don't occur. You know that. But among the code words, there is no real preference, right? It's you assume uniformly likely messages, then you have uniformly likely code words. Okay. So now, what about the decoder? That's the question. Okay. So the decoder also is very easy to write down. Okay. So you can write down the probabilities and simplify, etc. Finally, you will see that C hat, the ML C hat, is given by argument of minimization over C in C. What? The Hamming distance between B and C. Okay, so so you can show this for this model. It's very easy. It's also intuitive, right? So this is what we did. If you receive a particular vector b, you're going to look at the nearest code word vectors. And you look for the nearest code word vector in Hamming weight and pick that vector as your code word vector. So what do you do if there are two vectors which are closest? And you pick any one by tossing a coin. It's okay. You're okay. Okay. So that's the tie breaking rule if you get two vectors that are at the same distance. Okay, So that is very unlikely to happen in most cases. But if it happens, you just toss a coin and decide any one. Okay? So this is the decoding rule. Okay? So I know I have not derived it. You can write down probabilities and quickly derive it. Using this probability, you will easily get down to Hamming distance of uh, these things. Okay? A useful exercise is to write a similar probability for B. Okay? For, the, for the vector B, what is the probability? Okay. You want to do convolution, okay? So, but this is all this is different. Don't don't be be very careful when you think of convolution, okay? So, the underlying probable the elements are what these are vectors B and C and all that. So, I don't know what you mean by convolution, okay? You should be very careful. This is not I'm not yet defined a random variable for you to go to a proper PMF and then do uh, convolution. Okay, I've been saying PMF. That's a loose definition. I'm, I'm putting probabilities on each element in my sample space which is a vector so what do you mean by convolution okay so i don't know what you mean by convolution be very careful when you do this okay so you have to think about how to write the formula for b probability of b it's a useful exercise in probability okay all right so this is the decoder okay but now go back and think about what you have to do the only way you will implement this is to try all 2 power k possibilities and that is clearly not a very nice thing to do Right? You have to try all the 2 power k possibilities and you have no preference of which one to try first because all of them are equally likely. Okay? A useful thing to do now is to in instead write the same decoder in terms of the error vector E. If you can write it in terms of the error vector E, then your search becomes easier. Why? Why is your search easier over E as opposed to over C? E has a clear gradation in probability. You know which one to try first. You know which one to try next. Because those were the most probable things. Okay, So that is what we will do next. And I will probably do it in next class. Okay, So I will pick up from here.
and simplify this and eventually we'll get to a decoder which is reasonable but still it's not very easy to implement.